Florida, a 15-year-old boy is accused of killing his mother after an argument over a bad grade. Greg Ramos was arrested on Saturday. According to our Orlando affiliate, WKMG, he confessed to strangling his mom, 46-year-old Gail Clevenger, and burying her body under a fire pit at a church near their home. What's good, YouTube? You're back in the building with your old Uncle Mott. We're bringing you Life Gains Crazy World News, and it don't get no crazier than this shit I'm about to tell y'all that has happened in the messed up Panhandle, Florida area, and we're going to talk about it. But first, I got to put on my plus seven glasses of the sexy as hell, work on skilling up my craft, bringing you a more informed YouTube experience, something better to look at, Sponsor for this video, HDIP TV, offering you everything you're seeing on the screen for $14 a month, pay-per-view, sports, you name it, or get their premium programming, which is $35 for three months. And also, because of what the internet is doing nowadays, letting companies like AT&T just boot your ass right off the internet, cut your service, it is imperative that you get IP Vanish or some other service. My link is in the description, check it out. We've got Florida, all right? We've got a situation where we have an Anglo-Saxon male, 15-year-old kid named Greg Ramos, comes home, shows his mama his report card, he's gotten a D. Now, any self-respecting parent, when your child comes home with a D on his report card, right? You're gonna have a sit down with that child. You're gonna know what the hell is your little cookie-eating ass doing in school, all right? Are you paying attention? playing on your phone, what the hell is going on, you need to get this better because you need to get your ass up out of here and graduate. Right? That's what you're going, that's what a parent's going to do. You're going to let the child know. What does this child do to his parent? Oh, he proceeds, mom scolds him, he chokes her ass out. What the? He chokes her out, thinks she's dead, she's not, loads her up in the wheelbarrow, figures out she's not dead, chokes her some more, and then go get two of his buddies to chop up the body, burn her, and get rid of the body. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, we can't make up the reality of the world. Now y'all check out the news clip that I spliced together for you to see the rest of this story, because you can't make this stuff up. And then we'll finish this video. Investigators in Florida say a 15-year-old confessed to killing his mother. As Matt Lapoli reports, the two recently argued over grades. This reality was just, I just started crying out here because I like, you know, because I can't imagine getting that call for her husband. To everyone who knew her, Gail Clavenger was a kind, caring wife, mom, and friend. Oh yeah, very compassionate. I'm going to miss her, and I think it's a terrible tragedy. It's difficult even for Volusia County Sheriff's officials to grapple with how her life came to an end. It wasn't very emotional about it at all. Detectives say the victim's 15-year-old son, Gregory Ramos, strangled her, then reported her missing a day later. The two allegedly argued Thursday over his grades. Detectives say the son waited until his mother went to bed that night, choked her, got a wheelbarrow for her body, then found she was still breathing, so again choked the life from her. He drove around with her body, allegedly dumped the wheelbarrow in another town. Then deputies say he called two friends to help cover up the killing and stage a robbery at the family's home. It's those friends who help lead detectives to a place the boys often met, a fire pit behind a church. That's where the victim's body was dug from a shallow grave. It's heartbreaking to sit down with the family because the family's lost everything. Detectives say after a few hours of questioning, the teenager confessed and seemed stunningly unapologetic, even proud of his plot. No sign of remorse whatsoever. He was a soulless individual who thought he was the smartest person in the room. Uh, he also stated to us that he believes he deserved a Grammy for the way he performed with the 911 call. So there you go. You see the story. Y'all should know the next thing that's about to come out of my mouth. Had this been some black boys, I don't even know if they would have made it to the damn police station. Their asses might have been shot before they got to the police station. I am shocked that the issue of whether or not this was a two-parent home, you need a man in the house, 
hasn't been raised yet. Maybe it hasn't been raised because this is Republican Florida. Maybe that's why it hasn't come up. But you can damn sure believe had this been a black parent, black situation, they would have been wanting to know, well, who's the daddy, why the daddy ain't involved, to help corral the boy and all that stuff. It bothers me that we living in a world where a parent doing what she's supposed to do. You're supposed to get on your child when they mess up. The world is not easy. You don't react by killing something or killing someone, killing your mama. You don't react like that. And these boys need to be taught a hard lesson. And it needs to sink in because I think that with the innovation of the internet and access to seeing things so much that we are seeing all these things more than what we used to see them. But younger people are also being able to see this stuff more than what they used to see it. And in some cases, it seems as though they might be getting demonet I mean, desensitized to some of these things that we thought back in our day when we was growing up was just gruesome. It's the ultimate no-no. You never even let that cross your mind. But I mean, these kids, including that boy, they've got some mental issues going on. And I don't understand why we keep, we've nitpicked from the mental health um, field so long. We keep trying to take money out of that. But every time we have these mass shootings, instead of calling these people terrorists, which is what we should call them, we want to call them mentally ill, but then the politicians want to keep taking money away from mental health. Something's got to give here. If you don't want them restricting guns, and you want to say that the issue is not the gun, and I can agree to that to some degree, the issue is not the gun, it's the person shooting it. Yeah, they've got a mental problem, but you can't keep taking away from the mental health um, funding that's going on in this country because people need some damn help. Now, the issue that you run into with any of that, when someone just hauls off and does a heinous act, just like that in the split on a dime, there ain't nothing about mental health you can do unless you've seen that coming. Now, as more comes out about the story, maybe we'll have a better understanding of this kid. Did he show any signs of going crazy? Did he show any demonic signs? But this kid's got a demon in his head. He needs to suffer the consequences. You guys let me know what you think. Drop me comments on what you think should happen to this kid and his friends. How long should they go to jail? Should they ever see the light of day again? I do believe in second chances. These kids are so young, but there are some issues going on and they need to work them out. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video, comment and subscribe. Go get yourself a life game. Let me know what you think. We need to get these discussions popping so that we might can come out with better outcomes. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.